there have been cases of police brutality in India and we've we've been quiet. Yeah. I mean, you know, they've beaten uh they've they've gone out there and burnt villages and burnt crops and you know, killed people and detained people, killed them in thanes. You know, just now there's there, there's one case of that that uh, thing happening in Tuticorin and another day there was another one with an auto rickshaw beaten up. And the, the the worst thing about this is none of this is that shocking to us. I just kind of came from that place where you know, hey guys, there's problems happening in the world, but there's also problems happening here. Hmm. And I think the fact that we're actually living here, we're citizens here, we need to, in a sense, be responsible to at least raise our voice and let these guys know that it's not okay. Yeah. You know, and so and it's. I mean, the one thing I will be thankful for is the general police in India don't have guns; they have sticks. you know and they come out there and they hit you it's happened to a friend of mine at a concert we were just walking by and there was there happened to be a crowd and the police wasn't sure what was going on then they're going out there and hitting people mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and uh, if you hold the lathi you're not doing anything you're just walking past the crowd and yeah. and the the mob just happens to be confusing enough for people so that people take swings i don't think that's okay you mm-hmm. know uh, and uh, and yeah i mean it just I, to you know to be fair i don't even i don't even feel like i it, it's just a feeling you know it's just a feeling that i have that that this stuff that goes on is wrong hmm. you know and and we can sit we can sit here and debate and argue about uh, you know is it because they don't get paid enough is it because the system itself is bad is it because it trickles down from the top it could exist for a thousand different reasons and maybe some cops are just bad you know but i also had i like i i i honestly i honestly want to know what happens in a thane if if a cop is 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 mistreating somebody what do the other cops react like because i mean that's a peer pressure situ- mm. situation that's not that's not a situation that's you know uh, singled out towards this it's it happens it happens everywhere right like say you're a, say you're in a classroom and mm. and there's a, a group of people getting together to bully someone which which hmm. which has in- inevitably happened with all of us right what happens yeah. like I, i do you go out there and 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 stand up against the bully you know with the with the risk that now you might be an outcast in the group or or do you or do you go out there and just kind of turn a blind eye and you know why why do these things happen and i think that at every level if we could address them in a nice way that would be that would be forward progress and you know that's kind of what i want to do why do people in china why do athletes in china not speak out against xi jinping why do athletes in russia not speak out against putin and maybe it puts them in a precarious position and maybe life yeah. is more important you know so i i can't blame athletes in china to not speak out against against uh, the chinese government and similarly in india it's maybe a maybe a combination of fear and maybe a combination of hope mm-hmm. you know or and and, well, and also yeah and also one last thing before even yeah. before all of this happened athletes were still not speaking out whether it was right. whichever the government was they were not speaking out so maybe maybe it's a fact that you know the athletes don't get enough and mm. and, and 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 the truth is is that in my opinion no matter what you say india is far from a sporting nation yeah. you know so mm. until we actually become a real sporting nation where 500 or 1000 people are making money simply by playing sport not through not through jobs from the government not through ngc jobs not through funding by actually hmm. playing the sport if okay. people are if if 1000 people or 2000 people are actually making money doing that then maybe they'll have more opportunities to speak up i'm from the northeast and i moved to chennai at at the age of 8 hmm. you know so <laughs> by default i was a stand out you know uh, because there weren't any northeastern players even that i can remember uh you know forget in tripura but but pretty much anywhere else that played at a national level you know and uh, you know what was funny about uh the kind of racism that i felt is i kind of felt it from all corners you know because um the truth of the situation is guys and i'm not even talking simply about tennis i'm i'm just talking mm-hmm. about kids you know when 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 we went to the north the north indian kids were racist towards the south indian kids you know and and vice versa you know the south indian kids were racist towards the north indian kids when when they came to the south you know uh, and and it just 
I guess in a sense it was human tendency as well, where you know they just kind of. But but all of this in in tennis, this kind of broke. You know, we kind of broke the barriers a little bit by the time we were 15, 16, because by this point we all became really good friends, and you know we were playing 20, 25 events a year under under 14, under 16. So you know it, it became less of a race thing. But you know early on, you know I was called I was called a watchman my whole life. You know, uh, and uh, you know there's no secret behind that. My my nickname was Badur. Uh, people said that all the time. <laughs> so we lost um, you. Uh, if you could, and, uh, what did you say? The nickname I, I, was? No, I, I definitely. Well, Bahadur. Okay. You know, I was a. Uh, that's 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 kind of uh, you know where that I grew up, and you know I don't know I don't know I don't know what to make of it because the truth is at that time I felt a little bad, you know. But then you know. There were there were there were guys. I mean, listen, guys. You know, we grew up in South India, and you know, the dark guys used to be made fun of, not necessarily discriminated against. But you know, as an Indian, you can't tell me that that we were not color conscious. You know, we we right. made fun of people, and you know, even in leaf tennis aside, even families. You know, when you tend to uh, uh, describe a person. One of the first things would come out is is he or she fair or dark, hmm. you know. So we grew up we grew up in an environment that was racist. I mean, look at the caste system. We, I had friends I grew up with that wouldn't eat on the same table as me hmm. because they were Brahmin. People from the same group wouldn't eat on the same table because somebody was Muslim, you know. And at the time when we grew up, we just we made fun of them, but it was constant. It was. It was everywhere that happened. I just don't remember. I just don't remember no, not being like. I don't remember not being picked for something because I was from the northeast or because I was not. But I do remember, for example, like. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is a racist thing, but uh, or, a, or or a thing of convenience. But you know, uh, Tamil Nadu claimed me as one of theirs the whole life. You know, mm. I, I grew up in Tamil Nadu. I played my entire tennis in Tamil Nadu. And when it came to uh, the Asian Games and you know all of the other tournaments and Commonwealth Games and stuff that I played, and I think it's pretty funny now. When I won medals, they a part of them claimed that I was from Tamil Nadu, but the part mm. that had to uh, give me the prize of of you know the financial prize said I'm not from Tamil Nadu because I'm from Tripura. I didn't really care, you know. Oh, Maybe, okay. So you are but money I, in mind then in when you are winning, and then not uh, 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 when you rewarded that way. Yeah, I mean it happens, uh, okay, you know. It, okay. it, it, and uh, and I I don't know. Am I really from Tripura? Am I really from? Of course, I'm from Tripura. You know, my parents are from there, and my family is from there. But it's just very convenient who claims who from what, you know. And and then on on top of all of this, there's players going out there and changing states just to go out and play or represent somebody in national. I mean, it's a joke. It's a little bit of a joke, really, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, ra racism definitely, definitely exists. I mean, listen, go to colleges, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and 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 go out there and see the football teams, and go out there and see how the kids from the northeast are treated. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I'll be lying to you if I say that you know I had the same kind of harsh treatment. But I mean, I have family who's gone out to play, you know, at football academies at uh, when they were kids, and hundred percent they got. They got treated worse. I've been called Chinese, uh, but but listen, dude. The other day I was in Calcutta, and after a match I was just running around the field. And by the other day, I mean December. Um, so when I was out there cooling down after a, a you know a, a, an exhibition match, I was just chilling. Uh, about five or six Bengali kids came up to me and said Chinese. You know, mm, mm, mm. I don't think they're being racist. Hmm. They look at my skin and they say Chinese. Like I don't. Uh, had, so after after they said that to me, I kind of went to them and I, you know, my wife was with me. She was livid, you know, okay. uh, not no, not in the sense where she wanted to beat these kids, but she's like, hey guys, teach you these, you know. And I thought it was pretty funny because, you know, at that point. Um, I actually went out there and I started throwing the ball with these kids, and you know they they weren't discriminatory towards me, you know they thought it was a joke and you know they kind of laughed it off and you know whatever. But uh, the truth is is that in a sense they were like, hey, you're different than me, 
and it happens here all the time if there's a white guy who comes into a camp there's a bunch of kids yeah. going out there and saying you know in in tamil they say velakara right velakara oh, yeah. look look white guy is standing there mm. you know so i i i just think i i think all of this just comes down to education you know mm. we need to we need to uh, education culture we need to kind of treat our kids early on the right way you know when you when we see black guys over here i mean and there's there's tons of tons of black people from different different parts of the world who are in india in mm. you know uh, in, yeah. in different cities you know we see we see a lot of uh, uh, you know discrimination towards them so you know it's one thing when it happens with kids and they're doing mm. it innocently and it's another thing when when uh, when people are actually you know putting these people down because of the way they look that's obviously not okay but the kids need to be taught